I would probably say maybe five to ten percent of the cases that present with a diagnosis of ADHD in our office are truly functional ADHDs. What we've seen over our careers at looking at brain maps and, and working with people with neurofeedback is that it is way, way, way overprescribed. It is uh, an overdiagnosed. I mean, I just did a mentoring call today with somebody who was diagnosed with ADHD. They're on a stimulant medication and I'm looking at the brain map and just so we're clear, brain maps are not diagnostic, but they're functional evaluations and we can see what's happening with the brain and we can see how it's functioning. And, and you expect to see a lot of slow brain waves and not a lot of fast brain wave. And there's a, a ratio that we can talk about, but I'm looking at this map and I'm like, there's no signs at all of ADHD, but the person is taking Adderall on a daily basis. Yeah. Happens I mean, all the time. Yeah. yeah, it happens all the time. I would probably say maybe five to 10% of the cases that present with a diagnosis of ADHD in our office are truly functional ADHDs. They're, you know, they're usually anxiety. And the nice thing about the brain map, obviously, is that we can see that. We can see the pattern. It's a different pattern when it's related more to anxiety than when it's related to ADHD. And then the worst part about it is if it, if it isn't a true ADHD, and you give them Adderall, or you give them a stimulant, you actually can make things worse. And that's usually when they say, oh yeah, well, now my child's not sleeping. Okay, so we'll give him Clonidine. We'll put him to sleep, you know, and now they're on two <laughs> medications. Down, so, down. Exactly, right. exactly. <laughs> um, most of the time, I mean, every once in a while, there's an outlier, but you know, this is what we've seen time and time again. And 